This video is sponsored by the excellent brilliant.org. More later in the video. Hey guys, Quiff the Lazy Geek here. Welcome back to the channel. And today, as I am super hyped because a piece of free and open source software has gotten even better and it lets me and you now be even lazier, which is awesome for a lazy geek like me or like you. So what's happened is that Graxpert, the free and open source gradient extraction tool has gotten even better in its later, latest uh, beta version because it added an AI mode where you don't even need to place any sample points anymore. It just like automatically finds the gradient and removes it. You don't need to do anything. It's honestly close to magical. Now, Astrophoto Colon, one of the authors of Graxpert, has actually put an in-depth video on the topic in English uh, with links to download the tool, install it, etc. So I'll go through the um, installation steps very quickly here, and I'll put a link to this video down in the description, also probably up above to Astrophoto Colon's uh, video explaining all of that including as well explaining how you can actually contribute to help make the AI better by actually sending uh, them your linear uh, raw astrophotos. So make sure to give that video a watch and especially the links down in the description. So in addition to Astrophoto Colon's video, I'll have links in the description to where you can download this beta version of Graxpert as well as the AI model. Uh, that you need to make it work. So there are two links. One is the beta version, which is uh, on GitHub, which is a, a code hosting service. And you can see that once you click on the link, you'll have access to the Linux version, Mac OS version, and Windows version. I will be focusing on the Windows version. If you need more uh, details about how to install on the Mac version or Linux version, then again, you should check Astrophoto Colon's video because they have instructions on that. And the easiest thing in the world is to just click on here and you'll download this graxpert-win64.exe uh, file. And that's pretty much it for the first part. The second part is to get the background model. And this background model is hosted on a Google Drive link. Again, I'll have the link in the description. You can right click, right click here, click on download, and this will download this folder, this entire folder, as a zip file that you can then unzip on your computer. So you can see my computer here. The end goal is to get something like this. So you'll have downloaded this BG underscore model folder, uh, which you've unzipped. And within the folder, there's this kind of stuff, right? Save model, etc. cetera. Um, and you want next at this level, next to BG underscore model, you, have, you want to have the graxpert-win64.exec executable uh, available there. And you can see this is, uh, I've created a folder called Graxpert. It's in my downloads folder. I'll probably move it to documents or wherever I want later on. But you want to make sure that you have basically this with all of the uh, folders beneath BG underscore model. Otherwise, you'll have trouble once you start trying to use the AI. To launch the software, it's just like you, as usual. You don't need to install anything. You can just double click it. And Windows, you might get a security warning, that kind of stuff. I'm going to click Run. You might get another blue kind of security warning where you first need to say like, OK, more information. And then, yeah, yeah, allow me to run this program because uh, Windows can be very overzealous about protecting you. OK, when you launch this, you'll get this message that a newer version of Graxpert is available. Please completely ignore that. And this is normal with the beta version. And what you can do is simply load the image that you want to process. So I'm going to click on Load Image. And I'm going to start with this one. I don't even remember what picture this is, uh, but <laughs> we'll see what it is. You want to make sure that if you see a black screen, completely bl black, so yes, we have the Eagle Nebula here. If you see a completely black screen, you want to make sure that you select a stretch option here. Um, any setting will give you a better image and you choose whatever one works the best for you. And then you can ignore everything except the uh, interpolation method here at the bottom. By default, it will have one of the other methods selected. You want to set, switch it to AI. Also, by default, the smoothing is set to 1.0. This is the one parameter that you can work with. Uh, basically, what happens is when you do a background extraction, which is basically trying to, in this image, the center seems to be a bit brighter. I believe this was taken with my hyperstar. This corner is bright. This corner is dark. So there's this kind of like gradient that's going on. And that is the background we're going to compute and remove. And the sharper 
the transitions you have in your background. So you have like a, a fairly sharp transition between a bright area of background and a dark area of background, the lower you want the smoothing factor to be. So it can be interesting to just experiment with it. Um, and let's try for now with just like 0.5, see what happens. And then I am going to click on calculate background. And if this calculating goes on forever, uh, it likely means that you haven't properly uh, put the executable for the program right next to the BG underscore model. And wow. Okay, so the background seems to be completely gone. Like, just a moment. This is before. This is after. Before. After, oh wow, yeah. So now because we've removed the background, the uh, stretch seems to suddenly be more aggressive. So the uh, the noise becomes more visible. If I want, if I want to achieve like a, a level of stretch that was more or less equivalent to before, I'd do something like, uh, like this. But you can see the background is pretty much on. This is magical. And it was uh, quite quickly. If I want to double check what the background looks like, it's exactly as we were expecting. We have like a brighter green area to the center. We have like red on the corners and have like very dark here as well. This is exactly as I was expecting. So mm, this is going well for now. Let me load another image, see what else this can achieve. So now I have an image of M13 uh, that I took from my balcony here in Tokyo. And you can see as usual with Tokyo light pollution, I have a pretty significant gradient. It's kind of like having the dark area in the center and then the sides get uh, really bright. Those gradients, um, it almost looks like I had incorrect flats, which is absolutely possible. Um, and they're very difficult to actually get rid of once you're in post-processing if you've had like uh, bad flats. So we'll see how well this can work. Before I work on this gradient, I want to mention something else about the uh, smoothing here, which is that if you put it super low, you always want to double check the background that was taken because if the background starts to look like nebulosity that you have in the image, then you're starting to have trouble because it means that the background probably subtracted some nebulosity that you wanted to keep. If the background is still very smooth, you really won't have this issue, but it is something to consider while you're using the smoothing factor. So anyway, for now, I'll put my smoothing to 0 0.5. I can always adjust it later and try again. And we're going to click on Calculate Background to see how well it's going to work on this particular image. Just like the Eagle Nebula, this is actually uh, an image that I haven't tried your expert on before. Uh, so we'll see. So let's calculate the background. Depending on your computer, for me, it's just a few seconds. But if you have a slower computer, this might take a while to compute the background. And if you want to understand more about why that is and you want to learn more about uh, neural networks in general, well, the best way to do that or to learn about math and science in general is to use Brilliant.org. I use Brilliant on a daily basis to learn new stuff and also to keep you know all knowledge fresh. And I really like to use it to keep my brain exercised. And what really works for me is that Brilliant has a ton of short, really bite-sized lessons that I can fit anytime. So it's really perfect for busy people or for people who are waiting for <laughs> PixInsight or Graxpert processing to finish. And also like uh, Brilliant adds new lessons and topics uh, all the time. So there's always something new to learn. So as you have, were expecting, I'm currently checking out the neural network courses and I'm doing so while waiting for a neural network to finish its work. So this all feels deliciously meta. Uh, and, you know, I really appreciate also the fact that everything is grouped into courses that really starts almost from scratch. So you're really gradually learning. It adapts, adapts to your, your level, your ability. And it really makes like, you know, complex topics intuitive with tons of interactive charts and diagrams. And so I can get a real feel uh, for what I'm doing. Uh, so if that sounds interesting to you and you want to get access to everything that Brilliant has to offer for free for a full 30 days, you can do so at brilliant.org slash quivlazygeek, or you can simply click the link down in the description. And the first 200 of you will get 20% off Brilliant's annual premium subscription. Whew, and now that I've learned some new stuff about neural networks while waiting for a neural network to process my result, this is the result that we get. And honestly, this is just incredible.
I don't have to do anything. I don't have to do dynamic background extraction. I just like do it. And I really hope that this can be integrated into PixInsight, into Cyril, and maybe into other pieces of software as well. And because this is incredible. And I love the fact that it's also uh, free and open source because I'm I'm an open source developer myself and it's always good uh, to see stuff like that. But the result here, again, completely amazing. My background is fully flat now. L let me just like exaggerate the um, uh, stretching to see if we can uh, detect worse background. It seems like on the side, the background is worse, but this is actually maybe because the auto crop from PixInsight after the stacking was not completely enough to remove all of the stacking artifacts. We also have a little bit of the corner here left, which means that if I wanted to, I could try with like a lower smoothing, but you can see the smoothing was already like pretty like sharp in the transitions. So I wouldn't try to do better than this uh, because this is uh, the original better than this, sorry, because this is already really, really good. Let's try that on the last image just to see how well it can perform on a, on a variety of images that have really bad uh, gradients. And I really kept this one for last because it's really the worst gradient. And here it is. This is the Sunflower Galaxy and the gradients here are appalling. They're absolutely horrible. We have bright here, bright here, then like a, car, a kind of line of darkness here. Uh, we have like super dark in this corner, super bright in this corner. This is horrendous. And when I was processing this in, in PixInsight, I was not able to fully remove that gradient. So I ended up cropping the image, which in this particular case is perfectly fine because I have a really small target in the middle of my field of view. So that worked out. But in general, I wouldn't want to have to like, you know, crop the image that much. Let's see how well the AI can work. Now, I feel like the transitions are quite abrupt, so I'm not sure the smoothing of 0.5 will work well. Uh, that's going to be a good opportunity for me to try out the, uh, the smoothing. So anyway, let's click on Calculate Background and see what happens. And this is actually not bad at all, but you can see some of the background is remaining. So yeah, I guess there are no miracles there. Uh, let's have a look at how the, uh, the background looks like. So still the background has simulated the actual background quite well. And my feeling is what I could do is really try to put like the smoothing down to zero. Let's see what happens there. Maybe it will get better. Plus I don't have like a lot of nebulosity that could be hurt by a very low value of smoothing. So I can try that and click on calculate background, see what happens. Okay, uh, wow. So yeah, this is still not quite perfect, right? We can see some, some gradients there, but honestly, how amazing is this? This is uh, pretty incredible. Let's look at the, uh, the what the background looks like. So yeah, it's a bit sharper than before, but it doesn't look like it's you know killing any nebulosity. So let's go back to the processed image. This is honestly near insane. This is really, really good. And I've been, I think a lot of us have been waiting for something like this. So this is really super exciting. And I am so happy again, that this is free and open source. So if you don't mind, testing out better software, uh, you should go down below in the description to check out Astro Col Astrophoto Colon's video on this. You also want to check the links, download that and try it out on your images. And if you have the time, send your linear unprocessed images uh, to Astro Astrophoto Colon and the other creators of this uh, Graxpert tool because this is incredible. While you're on your way to the description and to those links, don't forget to click that like button or dislike if you thought this video was horrible. You can also subscribe to the channel if you're new, in which case, welcome to the channel. If you're interested in astrophotography, you really should subscribe. You won't regret it. You will also get 30% less cloudy weather uh, during the new moon if you do subscribe, absolutely guaranteed. <laughs> an additional 20% uh, clear skies if you also click the bell icon. And of course, leave a comment. Tell us what you think about Graxpert. Have you tried it out in this new beta version? What are your results? And how excited are you about the future of processing tools? It really feels like everything has gotten easier to get better results at the same time. And I love it. With that, thank you so much for watching. Don't forget whenever you can to look up at the stars and I'll see you next time.